Rules for assigning oxidation numbers. In order to understand the concept of oxidation and reduction, we can use an acronym OIL RIG to relate to the process of oxidation and reduction. Oxidation is considered loss of electrons and reduction is considered gain of electrons. Whenever there is an increase in oxidation number, the process can be considered as oxidation. So if the oxidation number changes from 0 to plus 2, the process is oxidation. Or if the oxidation number changes from minus 4 to minus 2, again it's considered to be oxidation. Similarly, a decrease in oxidation number can be considered as reduction. When the oxidation number changes from 0 to minus 2, it can be considered as reduction. Or plus 7 to plus 5 would be considered as reduction. So we can identify the process of oxidation and reduction if you are able to calculate the oxidation numbers. That's what we're going to do today. Here are some examples for you. Calcium, here it's a, it's a neutral atom. Calcium is a neutral atom here. Changes into Ca2 positive by losing two electrons. The atomic number of calcium is 20, so the total number of positive charges will be equal to plus 20. In a neutral atom, the number of protons will be equal to the number of electrons. Therefore, we have a charge of minus 20 for neutral calcium atom. The net charge, that is the sum of the charge of the protons and the electrons will be zero. That's why calcium is considered to be neutral in this case. Now, if you look at the product side, calcium changes into two positive, which means it has lost two electrons. So the atomic number still is 20 because the number of protons doesn't change in any atom. So we have a plus 20 charge. If it only has 18 electrons, then the charge of the electrons would be minus 18. Every time there is a chemical reaction, electrons are either lost, gained, or shared. So in this case, the electrons are lost. Therefore, the net charge for calcium 2 positive would be plus 2. So calcium undergoes oxidation because calcium changes from 0 to plus 2 and the net charge is Ca plus 2. This is how you determine whether an element has undergone oxidation or reduction. This can be repeated for any example that we see. So if you look at the net charge of neutral calcium, it is 0. And if you look at the net charge of calcium, in the product side is plus 2. Hence, we can safely say the process is oxidation. Potassium on the left side has a zero oxidation state because the number of protons are equal to the number of electrons. It is plus 19 and minus 19. On the product side, it has only 18 electrons and 19 protons. If you look in the periodic table, you will be able to calculate that. Hence, the process is oxidation here because there is an increase in oxidation number. Aluminum on the left side, on the reactant side, has a charge of zero because it's a neutral atom. In the product side, it has lost three electrons. Therefore, the oxidation number is plus three. Therefore, the process is oxidation. The sulfide ion, when, changes to, when it changes into sulfur atoms, it loses two electrons. Therefore, the oxidation number changes from minus two to zero. There is an increase in oxidation number. Hence, the process is oxidation. Fe2 plus of ferrous ion, changing to Fe3 plus of ferric ion happens when it loses one mole of electrons. Therefore, the oxidation number changes from plus 2 to plus 3. This is again oxidation. Neutral ion atom changing to Fe3 plus happens when it loses 3 electrons. Therefore, this is a change in oxidation number from 0 to plus 3. Hence, the process is oxidation. SN2 plus changes into SN4 plus by losing two electrons. Hence, it can also be considered as an oxidation because there is an increase in oxidation number. These are the examples of oxidation. Now, let's look at some examples of reduction. Bromine belongs to group 17 in the periodic table. It's an electronegative element. They have a tendency for gaining electrons. 
So the neutral bromine atom gains an electron and changes into a bromide ion. Oxidation number changes from 0 to minus 1. There is a decrease in oxidation number. Hence, the process is reduction. Oxygen, belonging to group 16, has a valency of minus 2. Therefore, a neutral atom of oxygen gains two electrons and forms an oxide ion. Oxidation number changes from 0 to minus 2. Hence, the process is reduction. Phosphorus gains three moles of electrons and changes into a phosphide ion. Oxidation number changes from 0 to minus 3. Decrease in oxidation number. Hence, again, it's a reduction. Ferric ion gains three moles of electrons and changes into neutral ion atom. Oxidation number changes from plus 3 to 0. Hence, the process is reduction. If a ferric ion atom or Fe3 plus gains one mole of electrons, changes into ferrous ion, there is a decrease in oxidation number from plus 3 to plus 2. Hence, the process is reduction. Lead 4 positive can gain two moles of electron and change into Pb2 plus. Hence, the oxidation number changes from plus 4 to plus 2. This would be considered a reduction again. These are some examples of reduction. Now let's look at the rules for assigning oxidation number. First of all, we will define what oxidation number is. These are charges, actual or hypothetical, assigned based on a set of rules. You need to know the rules to be able to identify what the oxidation number of the elements are. For most common elements, the oxidation number depends upon the group number or valency or the difference in electronegativities between the elements. For group 1 elements, the common oxidation state is plus 1. For group 2, it's plus 2. Group 13 is plus 3. Group 14 is 4 or plus 4. For group 15, it's going to be minus 3. Group 16 and 17, it's minus 2 and minus 1. This can be determined easily by looking at the periodic table. So these are known. These are known factors. The oxidation number of an atom in general in the elemental state is considered zero because it has equal number of protons and electrons. So you touch any element in the periodic table, it has an oxidation number of zero because it is in the uncombined state. The oxidation number of an element, if it is a single monoatomic ion, is the same as the charge of the ion. What we mean by that is, Fe is a monoatomic ion, a single atom. The oxidation number is plus two, or the charge is plus two, therefore the oxidation number is two. In binary compounds of metals and non-metals, we are referring to ionic compounds, the metal always has a positive oxidation number and the non-metal has a negative oxidation number. In compounds formed between non-metals, the element with higher electronegativity is always given a negative oxidation number. In all compounds of hydrogen, the oxidation number of hydrogen is given a value of plus one. In compounds like hydrides, like sodium hydride and lithium hydride, it is assigned a value of minus one. This is an exception. So if you see an example of a compound where hydrogen is present in a hydride, the oxidation number should be considered as minus one and not the common oxidation number of plus one. So all you have to do is look out for exceptions before determining the oxidation number of the unknown element in a compound. In compounds containing oxygen, oxygen is usually assigned a value for its oxidation number as minus two. In peroxides, like hydrogen peroxide and sodium peroxide, the oxidation number is considered to be minus one. So this is again an exception. In fluorides of oxygen, you will notice that fluorine is written as a second element and oxygen is a first element. Most of the compounds that you have seen, oxygen was a second element. So this tells you that fluorine is more electronegative than oxygen. Hence, fluorine will have a negative oxidation number and oxygen will have a positive oxidation number which again is an exception. So if you have two fluorines attached to oxygen, like in oxygen difluoride, the oxidation number of oxygen will be plus two. The second fluoride that we know of is O2F2, where the oxidation number of oxygen will be plus one because there are two fluorine atoms. Each of them has a minus one oxidation state and oxygen will have a plus one oxidation state. For neutral molecules, the sum of the oxidation numbers is always zero. We already stated it, we are just repeating it. Here is an example, carbon dioxide. The net charge of carbon dioxide molecule is zero because it's a molecular compound. Oxygen in this case is a regular compound. It's not a, fluor it's not a fluoride and not a peroxide. Therefore, the oxidation number will be minus two. If that is true, carbon should have an oxidation number of plus four 
and oxygen will have an oxidation number of minus 2. Since there are two oxygen atoms, there will be 2 times minus 2, which will make it minus 4. And the net charge will be plus 4 and minus 2, which is going to be 0. For complex ions, the sum of the oxidation number is the charge of the ion. What I mean by that is, if you look at the oxalate ion, the formula of the oxalate ion is C2O4 2 negative. It's a complex ion because it has more than two atoms. So the oxalate ions have a net charge of minus 2. If you want to determine the oxidation number of carbon, we can do this. Let's assign a value of x for its oxidation number. How many carbon atoms are there? There are two of them. So we can say 2x plus the oxidation number of oxygen. There are four oxygen atoms times minus 2 is the oxidation number of oxygen because it's a regular compound. And the net charge is minus 2. Or we can write 2x minus 8 is minus 2. 2x is equals to 6 or x is equals to plus 3. So each carbon atom in oxalate ion has an oxidation number of plus 3. Here are two more examples. MnO4 minus is called the permanganate ion. The oxidation number of manganese is unknown. We're going to call it x. The oxidation number of oxygen is taken as minus 2 because it's not a peroxide and it's not a fluoride. There are four oxygen atoms. Therefore, x plus 4 into minus 2 is minus 1. x minus 8 is equals to minus 1. And x is equals to plus 7. So the oxidation number of manganese is plus 7. In sulfuric acid, we want to determine the oxidation number of sulfur. Hydrogen has the common oxidation state of plus 1. Oxygen has a common oxidation state of minus 2. So we can do the calculation like this. 2 times 1, because there are two hydrogen atoms, plus the number of unknown elements is 1. We have one sulfur atom, therefore x, plus oxygen. Four oxygens are present, and the oxidation number is minus 2. So the net charge is going to be equal to 0 in this case. So 2 times 1 plus x plus 4 times minus 2 is 0. So x minus 6 is equal to 0, or x is equal to plus 6, the oxidation number of sulfur. So sulfur in sulfuric acid has an oxidation number of plus 6. Here are some examples for you. Determine the oxidation number of chromium in dichromate, phosphorus in phosphorus pentoxide, and nitrogen in nitric acid and check your answers on the next slide. Pause the video for now. That's it for now. This is how you assign oxidation numbers and determine the oxidation numbers of either atoms in ions or in neutral molecules. That's it for now. Thank you and have a great day.